Diacono. He is going to give his presentation with Guido Priano. It's called Networks for um, Fiber Optic Access. Her Hernan has a master's degree in a company uh, in business administration. Yes. Thank you. Let me make a comment. I think the the time uh, is not on. Just so that I can check the time. Hi, I'm Hernan Arcidiacono. I'm going to. We prepared together with Guido this presentation of fiber optic access networks for wholesalers. And let me clarify that some of the technical issues we will be referring to are based on documents of the product forum that are freely accessible. So if you wish to have details, you can have access to these. And the others are our own opinion and other experiences we are doing on these topics while we work on projects such as these. My presentation has been structured into two main parts. One is to set the context as to why these networks arise, and others are more of a technical operational context. So let us start with the first part to set the context. The first element that we're going to take into account is a telco industry. So the telco industry is an industry that originally arose as a monopoly. The reality is that if we stop and think about this, the infrastructures, have the distribution infrastructure had a monopoly when we think about the waterworks or certain public utilities there's no point in overlapping networks so this began as a natural monopoly and over time towards the end of the last century it's wonderful to say last century and to have lived to see it this then started to have a competition and a virtuous cycle was generated because the industry evolved a lot reaching more people with more services which then evolved nevertheless uh, because this is uh, there is competition some issues start to arise industry this industry is capital intensive over time the margins start to become eroded so the repayment of these investments start to become greater so the telco industry starts to become more creative to mitigate made effects such as those and we start to see value added services the data centers then become incorporated into this offer then computing as a service is incorporated into the offer so many of these things and in fact the telco companies started getting out so this was not that successful and in addition to that together with the strategy of becoming consolidated with the industry, companies that merge or companies that acquire others always seeking to deal with this problem. But nevertheless, this was not enough. In yes, now bear with me because in a while, let you tell you let me tell you about a new strategy that emerged over the past years. Now the second element is that of the FANS. FANS is fixed asset network sharing. Fixed access network sharing. The concept of FANS is a concept used by the broadband forum. It is not exclusive for fiber optics. I'm going to speak from the standpoint of fiber optics, we, there's no point in speaking of other types of technology for fixed networks, but this could be also applied to copper networks. And basically, the broadband forum 
with the fans establishes the way an infrastructure provider, which they call INP. These infrastructure providers can put their networks available to other operators, which are the VNOs, the virtual network operators, and this network can be partitioned. So in this way, one single infrastructure can be used by several operators. This definition of the broadband form can be applied to the interfaces that the two parties have to make in order to use this network. There you have some of the documents. If you wish to expand on this concept, you can access the Broadband Forum site and download these documents. So this Broadband Forum defines on one hand the INP and then the VNO. The INP is the infrastructure provider, the one that has the physical network. When we say the physical network, now I've been working on these projects for quite a number of years now. And when we say physical, it's not only physical, but it's also the technology that goes on that physical network. I say this because, in fact, there are some that seek to share the physical part, but economic is not feasible. So the INP partitions that physical network so that it can be used by the VNOs. And then you have all the interfaces and tools required by the VNO to operate on that, because the VNO is the one who has the clients. These are the ones who make the diagnosis on them. They have to do provisioning on the clients, and they manage the services. This graph doesn't show this very clearly because of the colors, but here you can see that there is a VNO that is darker and one is grayer. And what you cannot see is that the CPEs on the left should also have different colors because they are sharing the network. The broadband form, in turn, defines different architectures for the FANS model. The first one is simply, it's not simple, but it's an abstraction layer, which through the management system can be done to make the VNOs think that this network has been partitioned logically. This partition has not been done on the network. In fact, this is just an abstraction. But this is the model that can be implied more easily, and it's more logical to imply, implement this, because when we expose this network to third parties, first of all, you have to have the network. And if you have the network, it's because you built it a couple of years ago. Then you have legacy devices that don't allow something else. So this is like almost the model by excellence. And there are the two models where the virtualization mode for the node is as follows, the access devices can generate the logic partitioning in these. But mm -hmm. of course, you should have the devices throughout the network to do so. Or also, the scheme, which is the software-defined access networks. In other words, an access network that is managed by the software. And some say they do have this, but in my, from my view, this is not yet in a position of being implemented, because part of the things that should occur is that these should be multi-vendor and multi-technology networks, and I think this is a bit far from being the case. The third element in this context has to do with the serve codes and the net codes. So if you haven't heard about this before, is the following. In the case of the operators in recent years, and this is not a technical issue. This is more from the business side, but they have subdivided the businesses into two parts. You have the telco, 
And when it's divided into two, this is divided corporately into two different companies. One exploits the service, and the other is the owner of the infrastructure. So the Servco sells the services to the clients, and the Netco has the infrastructure. We will not go into the details here because we don't have enough time. But this is in response to the fact that two different businesses with two different approaches and that access capital in a different way and have different risks. If you have infrastructure, you can obtain money in a better way. You have the optic fiber, which is an asset. So one of the two operates better the two separately than the two together. So if we look at the three elements, that we saw when setting the context, we have that initially we said that the telecom companies tended to be have a monop be a monopoly in the past. So if today we have the infrastructure as a single one in a given zone, then we are the most efficient doing this the most efficient the most efficient way without overlapping networks today we have technology so that this single network is not exploited by one single provider so i can have several providers on one same infrastructure but competing with one another so these circos and netcos that started to appear this was back in 2014 this was not yesterday and these combine the same theory this brings together the concept of fans and the INP which is the infrastructure provided which is the same as a netco in the past that telco that sold services to itself now becomes a netco and taking advantage of the model of the broadband forum can provided two more uh, options. Now let us go to the second part, to the most technical and operational aspects. So on one hand, we have the components of a system. This graph here is just to compare it against one that I will show you later on. But what we see here is the management system, the core of the management system. In a telco, it's the VSS and the OSS. B is business and O is operations. So the B part are the modules in gray at the top and the operations, the O part, are the, the white modules. This is a classical layout of a telco for its management system. When we divide things between the infrastructure provider and the virtual operators, a priori, one says, well, in the previous chart, we draw a line and one part stays on one side and the other on the other. So this is the theory. So we say, well, on the network side, I have all the things that I have to do that have to do with the management and diagnosis of the network, all the performance tools, and I also have to provide tools so that the VNO can carry out the diagnosis for the clients so that the clients are not in the network, but things that otherwise could not be solved. And if we go to the VNO side, this includes everything that is related to the client mostly, as well as some business-related issues like customer support, the setup of the remote devices and the services, so everything that has to do with CRM. Now, in practice, this line that we drew in the middle is not a line. It's not so neat that some things are on one side and others on the other side. So there is a kind of duplication for several reasons. Now, why does this happen? In some cases, for logical issues, I am a virtual network operator 
and somehow or other there are some aspects of the network that I have to know, even though I don't have that network. So if, if we say it's not so clear cut. And the other aspect that I see that in practice makes these projects somewhat more complicated is that the two who come together, the one who's going to sell the infra network infrastructure services and the one who's going to purchase it, is that the two are operators. And because the two are operators, the two have their own practices as operators. So this is what we see in practice. I might have a set of alarms for the default suite, and the other operator has a whole set of different alarms. You say, well, these are the network alarms that I wish to provide. I think these are the ones that you need to operate, and the other one understands they need other things because they already had the systems in place and already had their own network. So this is what we see in practice. We are in the process of implementing our first uh, BNO and in turn as BNO we are in other networks we are both sides of the counter so in a way we are familiar with the two sets of problems so well and this oh uh, alarms Uh, this is happening to us. Uh, I didn't know where it was coming from, and he was asking something. Seguido. Bueno, entonces decía los el tema de los elementos de la red. So the first part, and even though it may sound trivial, this aggregation network, because. When we worked um, in this, these projects, uh, some people came and asked uh, director connectivity. So you see the degree of maturity that there was uh, a few years ago. So today, everybody has a clear idea that you're going to aggregate all the e the OLTs and take the, the scattered throughout the city and take them to a single. Um, um, IXP with all the redundancy you may wish and in turn multiple DNOs, uh, BNOs. Uh, so, and in, the, in a PON type network, it's the OLT. The OLT is the core uh, machine of the central office or the hubs. So, de depending on the model, the OLT will be aware that there are several logic partitions or not. In the model that we adopted, obviously, a, a lot of things are configured in OLT, fault and performance, uh, all those things are there. It's one of the Achilles heels because the discussion, what we were just discussing with Guido, that some people ask for a lot of alarms, and one of the terrible um, uh, impacts is the uh, impact it has on the performance of the OLT. In our case, in particular, particular the OLTs are of several brand vendors. It's not just a single brand. So that is also a challenge if we want to make it uh, even um, inside of the VNO. Then the optical distribution network, the CON, these are splitted networks, split networks 32, 64, 128, uh, 2 or 3 levels, uh, splitting levels. So we, in this case, we have two levels of splitting with 128 uh, splitting. And so far, is uh, it is 
here that uh, the operator's network gets because the drop to reach the client's uh, household um, is that's the VNO. It's it's the owner of the client and that installation. So the back hole is just the connection between the two parts. There's not much to add here, so I'm going to skip it. We we don't have much time. The CPE and the ONT in the specific case of all networks. So this is in the side of the VNO, the service provider, the network providers. We don't. Uh, there's we have nothing to do in this part. It could go unnoticed. But here, the crucial part is interoperability, because although interoperability is very well advanced and uh, acknowledged, sometimes it's not so easy to achieve it because of uh, uh, um, problems uh, that vendors uh, put. Some, uh, some vendors are open, some of them are willing to make things difficult for you and to complicate uh, things. And one thing is when you rule in your network, when you have the OLT and the ONT um, uh, that uh, match in the same brand, and, and but all of a sudden, in our case, for instance, we have multi-vendor in the OLT and on the other side, you, it's it's up to the others. The others choose what vendors, and you need to have interoperability tests and protocols for the services. So, so it's it's challenging. Of course, it can be overcome, but uh, rather than a technical issue, it uh, it uh, it's a commercial issue uh, that depends on the vendors, and then the technical part that the government. Uh, uh, the governance of this is a bit more difficult. And finally, I have only three minutes left, some remarks on the field, the field operations. Everything we've seen so far could be a little bit more or less difficult and may take more time to install it. But once you develop the interfaces and we are operating these two systems interconnected, we absolutely govern from a centralized uh, place. Now, when we go to the field, those of us who work with external plant networks, we know that uh, it poses some issues in terms of practice, or quality, and uh, enforcing the practices, etc. And if on top of that, I'm going to have several companies working in the same network, we understand that this poses a challenge for the future. If you wish that challenge, we decided to mitigate it with some things. First of all, the differences of the processes of uh, assignment of resources in the field can be complicated. Well, it can be solved in the systems reasonably, but there may be different uh, processes that clash in such a way that one side may assign a resource and the other process is waiting for this, that same resource. So you need to cross them well so as not to uh, cause any problems in governance. On the other hand, in order for what you assign to be used indeed, and you, you know that it's very difficult to, to monitor, at least um, um, uh, reasonably economical, then the tag, you put the tag in uh, to mitigate. And finally, Optical uh, optic terminals that don't need anybody to make them, but just somebody has to come and connect from the outside. According to the timer, I have one minute left. I'm going to try to finish in time, and let me draw the conclusions. All the uh, suffering of the industry because of loss of margins and. Uh, 
how intensive, uh, how capital intensive it is. Well, really, today, that we have some ways out technologically that didn't exist in the past. And I think that uh, this, the Serco and Nepto uh, solutions some, somehow match this. And so the scenario that we see in the future is we see new, more and more cases appearing, specifically in Argentina. Today we have four companies in different uh, areas ready to provide these services and essentially we are users of two of them and part of our network oh, we are going to provide services to whoever wants them we already have uh, the operator and another one with whom we have signed uh, agreements so we wanted to talk about this because this is uh, a growing issue so we wanted to discuss it with you no more time left and i'm done is there any questions if there are any questions guido will answer he's the one who knows we do have questions there's one remote hernan and Guido, could you get closer to uh, the microphone? In the meantime, Guillermo, go ahead. Yes, Azael Fernandez asked, could dark fiber optic markets uh, be opened in a region or would their um, uh, existence contribute to a model of uh, uh, warehouse? Uh, markets mm. wholesale uh, fiber optic sellers this is a very personal opinion i see that the dark fiber is always depleted i don't see that as a market in itself i know that it's a requirement by the mar market but then it clashes against availability of course the more fiber available and if you could mount this on top it would uh, leverage this model today i don't see it coming from this side what i do see in general is somebody that already has the network and decides to operate it more efficiently because if not what's the reality if you are not the incumbent somewhere you end up having 15 percent share of the market and your neighbor too now if the neighbor uh, all right my network will end up uh, operating 30 percent of the market with the same network and in the conclusion my conclusion should be that it should make it easier to have fiber available in more places and to improve the access of a lot of people yes i was thinking of new places new contents of fiber optic many companies could reach one single place with the investment up um, setting uh, fibers in one area and uh, having many companies that's a good thing about this model it's not that many companies have to invest in many places but one company alone can provide services to many companies that's wonderful good there's there's a question here in the among the audience good afternoon you mentioned that you're already users of a wholesale network my question has to do with the economic part in your experience to what um, what is how far can you go in the cost uh, how much can you devote to the leasing or the rent of this wholesale network? I assume that it is a, a good business for you because you're doing it, but do you have any caps, any recommendations? Well, I may not be able to talk of some values out of confidence 
confidentiality issues, but let me say a couple of things. First of all, Argentina is not the best country to speak of prices, but do because the dollar goes up and up every day. But I've seen this evolution. The first thing is some started to get marketed uh, having to pay fees based on uh, the homes uh, that are uh, and then pay for each of the homes that got connected that was the model that they started in Argentina but in the last two or three years nobody wants to pay for the homes that are made available because if not there's no business so the model now takes into account the households that are connected and it's built in dollars. Values are falling. Originally, I mentioned people talk of 12, 13, 14 dollars, then 10, and by now, I assure that it's much less than that. But I think it's still being negotiated and it's permanently negotiated. Today, we sell cheaper than would we started buying initially and now we are renegotiating with those we bought from what i would say is that the, at the values that we have today the court of the port is about 50 percent of the final price that you asked your client for now the situation i see today and i'm not so sure that it will be maintained because the internet price is also dropping so once again, in our case, this is somehow affected by the macroeconomic situation in Argentina. The dollar varies a lot, and we have to do renegotiations at, uh, uh, continuously. But I must say that the prices are at less than $10, much less than $10. You, the, this, they charge per connected port, and in the market, there are no major requirements. If you don't pay a fee for this, let me know how many port you will guarantee that you will buy. This is not even the case in the market, neither to purchase nor to sell. I don't know if this answers the question. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Hernan. Any more questions? No more questions. Thank you, Hernan, for your presentation. And applause. We now invite the next speaker. He's 